do a video on a composition analysis of this incredible watercolor sketch by JMW Turner in the Tate Gallery in London, Tate Museum. He is uh, in this quick sketch in pencil and watercolor on off-white paper. It's very small, about 10 and a half by 8 inches, just utilizing almost every textbook fundamental composition design principle in a natural subconscious way leading you into an incredible conversation and I want to discuss some of his key strategies techniques and highlight his genius and mastery as a composer and inventor this is a quick sketch looks like he did it probably in uh, maybe three to six hours in a few layers of watercolor so it's not labored over but he's getting his point across and he, he is just creating this incredible conversation between people, cows, landscape, sky, another group of people. And it, there's a, a buzz in the air in this funny little country landscape scene. And I want to talk a little bit about how he's formally doing some of this. First of all, he is using basic principles of primary and secondary focal points. He's leading your eye on a journey from this group of figures over to this cow grouping, which this branch leads you up into this main mass of trees, back into this other grouping of figures in a circular path, which you kind of keep going round and round, and you just want to keep looking for more. This cow, funnily enough, is moving over to this one. This one moves back into the water, and this circular conversation is just a joy to to look at and Turner's having a lot of fun here. Um, along with these eye paths there are primary action lines which are contrasted by stabilizing horizontals and verticals. So diagonals are going to be dynamic and verticals and horizontals will be more uh, serene, stabilizing, grounding, and uh, the contrast of these two creates a great conversation. One without the other would be too boring and Turner uses a great variety of both here. I'm going to X this out, see if you can notice some of them yourself. Repeated diagonals on these reds in energies moving up to the right-hand corner of the picture plane, back down into this left quadrant and lower area of the picture plane, contrasted by these blue lines, which are kind of the reverse diagonals of those reds. Those all sort of lead you into these more balanced, stable verticals of this figure, this figure, and then he's setting some of these horizontals off kilter, sort of throwing you off a little bit. This line of cows is perfectly horizontal, and all of these perfect horizontals and verticals help this bridge look so shaky, and the caricature of it as a bridge that you might fall off of potentially is just highlighted by the fact that he's tweaking these angles slightly off kilter to the left or to the right. Just genius and he's really feeling it in his composition. A lot of fun to look at and observe a great mind at work. Next I want to move on to the armature of the rectangle. This is a basic concept that you may or may not have heard of but all classical composers since basically the time of the Renaissance and all the way back to Greco-Roman times in the Western world have been dividing rectangles with a series of simple diagonals in order to find key uh, intersections and key spatial divisions within the picture plane. This particular basic armature uses uh, diagonals to cut the picture plane and then alter alternating between uh, halves, thirds, fourths, and the even up to fifths. Basically in this uh, particular armature Turner is kind of making use of this third and this third over here along with some halves and I will highlight those in this other slide here. So this figure, the secondary focal point figure is sort of holding this uh, right hand I guess that's actually quarters, uh, my bad, so one, two, three, four. So he's not really using the classic thirds, rule of thirds would be here, 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 and here. So he's using the quarters and the halves in this composition. 
and basically those create other intersections which he's following echoing I'll get rid of one of these and see if you can see the echoes along this main diagonal he's using primary diagonals selecting them and then repeating diagonals to move up to certain areas of the picture plane but this armature is sort of the underpinning of this composition and these are some of the writers Alberti obviously in the Renaissance talks about mathematics and proportions and the works of Da Vinci, Piero, Piero della Francesca, I mean the list goes on and on. Up into the 19th century, Charles Boulot, The Painter's Secret Geometry is a great book that sort of resurrects some of these ideas in, in the French Academy and Michael Jacobs, J. Hambridge, Dynamic Symmetry are all classics which I encourage you to investigate so you can uh, utilize some of these principles in your own work. So. Uh, so those are some of the primary directions of the armature and uh, armature line paths. Okay, next I want to move move a little bit away from the lines and start talking about the tones, uh, which is another just beautiful simplicity of masterwork here by Turner. So he's he's doing an interchange of darks, middles, and lights in order to move your eye. So basically, the middle is the transition between the dark and the light, and your eye pauses here before it steps into the light otherwise the contrast would be a little too harsh and he's constantly doing that sort of dark middle middle dark middle light here's a light against a dark here's a real sharp light against a dark so he's playing with this all over the, the picture plane here's a dark against a light here's a middle against a uh, some dark f accents and then a light moving you into this light area dark middle light so I want to just highlight some of that main movement with some of these arrows. He's, he's leading you this way, this way, from the dark to the middle to the light. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. So he's, he's just ricocheting you all over, the, uh, all over the picture plane. It's a very rhythmic, energetic composition. Along with values, he is making use of edges and edge hierarchy is a concept which any composer is using in order to draw the attention to particular places within the picture plane. The greatest area of contrast is here and over here and those are kind of the primary and sub-primary focal points sort of starting here and then bam leading you to right over there. The purple is some of the secondary edge qualities. So these are hard edges up in the front where the red is. Purple is next in line. And then S is the soft edges, which are not as hard as these ones here, or obviously the, the very hard, sharp ones in the front. So uh, there's a edge hierarchy, which he's utilizing in order to bounce you around the picture plane as well. Uh, finally, Turner is making use of this idea of mass conception and I don't know if you've seen those blocky figures by Luca Cambiasso but this is the idea where you're reducing an entire composition to primitive forms and seeing kinda how if this was an entire still life just sort of stacked on a table as blocks, cylinders and spheres would the composition have integrity still so I think Turner is I will uh, go down here to the bottom and show you a little bit of how wild this composition is. This, this doesn't have to be the exact mass conception, but overall he's creating a very dynamic grouping of masses with these big tree forms. I use cubes because they really show the perspective. And you can do this for yourself. Try to simplify any composition into big primitive forms and see if it holds up. Is your eye following a path, a journey? These are those cows where this one's moving this way, back that way, this way, that way. This is that figure grouping which sort of creates a bit of a wedge leading you up into the cylinder, wedging back up to there. So this is a just genius orchestration of simple primitive forms and I want to leave you there and uh, just Hopefully you can utilize some of these principles in your own compositions as a painter or draftsman. And thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.